Hi friends, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to show you two examples of timers that you can create in PowerPoint. The first is this one here. And then we'll also see how to create one like this that counts down from 10 seconds. I won't make you watch that one all the way through. Let's get into PowerPoint. Okay, for this first one, I'm just going to insert a shape and we'll go with a circle. Hold down your shift key to make sure that's a perfect circle. For fill on this, I'm gonna go with white and outline, we'll go with black and then weight of six, but obviously you can choose whatever you want for styling here. And then I'll right click on the shape and say edit text. I'll type in a five, select that with a control A. And then up here on your home tab, I'm gonna make that a red font and something kind of large, maybe 166 for the size, like that. So this one's gonna count down from five, four, three, two, and one. So I need to copy paste these. This one will be for four. And I'll do the same thing for the others. Three, I'll grab two of these, copy paste. I'm just doing a control C, control V for my copy paste there. This will be a two and this will be a one. All right. The location of these doesn't really matter. We're gonna eventually lay them on top of each other, but let's first get our animations in place. So this timer will start with the five visible and basically we want that five to disappear and show the four. And then the four will disappear showing the three and so on. To make that happen, we're gonna use animations. Let me just select the five and then come up to animations and we need an exit animation here. You can try out different things. I found the wheel was kind of fun. So going around in a wheel there as it disappears. That looks good. Now, if you select this over here under timing, we want to start this first one on click, but let's say it just takes one second to complete that animation and there'll be no delay on this one. For the next one though, number four, we'll do the same thing. So exit animation of wheel, but this one we don't want to start on click. We want this to automatically start after one second. So up here on your start, we're going to say after previous, and it should go one second after previous. So delay of one, I'll just type in a one and hit enter. You can also use the arrow keys here if you prefer. And then duration on this will also be one. So it's going to take one second to disappear. And that disappearing will start one second after the previous one finishes. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. We'll do the same thing for the others. And there's a really handy animation painter to make this real easy. So with the four selected, come up to animation painter. And this will basically copy paste or paint on whatever animation you have on the four over to the three, the two, the one, and so forth. And if you double click it, it'll let you select multiple objects after that. So I'm gonna double click animation painter and then I'll hover over the three. You see the paintbrush there. I'll click on the three so this is just applied the same animation, that wheel exit animation. And up here, you'll see that it's starting after previous, duration of one and delay of one. So really easy way to apply this to multiple things. I'll do the same for the two. We're getting a preview there. And then the same for the one. Obviously you could do all of these manually too, but the animation painter makes it really easy. Okay, I'll hit the escape key just to get out of that animation painter function. And let's play this from the top and make sure that everything's disappearing as we want. So down here, I'll click on the slideshow button. The first one I have to start on a click. So I'll click. And then the others should disappear after one second. That looks good. Perfect. All right, now all we need to do is just overlay these on top of each other so that you only see one number at a time. The last number we'll see after the sequence runs is gonna be the one, so we'll leave that where it is. On top of that should be the two. So I'll right click on this, bring to front, and then move it over the one. And then same, going up the numbers, bring the three to the front, align it over these others. Right click, bring to front for the four. 
And same thing finally for the five, which will be the first thing that we see. Get those to line up. And then I'll just select everything here, drag it to the middle of the slide. And once again, let's play this. I'll click to start. And there's our timer. Going down one second at a time until we're done. You could actually add some text to appear at the end of that timer to say time is up or something like that. But that's how the timer works. All right, next let's look at the example where we have sort of the tiles for the four different numbers. So I'll come up to insert. Once again, we're working with shapes here. I'm gonna grab the rectangle that has the rounded corners. Obviously you can choose whatever shape you want for this though. I'll just kind of eyeball this. We wanna do the same thing with the fill. So this will be white, outline will be black, and for weight we'll go six. I'll right click and edit text. This one will be a zero and we'll go with the red font again. Maybe 166. Okay. And then I'll just copy paste that and then copy paste again on this side. And then in between we need a colon right here. So I'll just insert a text box Type in colon, this size, let's see what 166 gives us. Looks about right, maybe a little bit squished. I'll just move some of these over. All right, you get the idea. You can play with it to get it just right. Now this one, we're gonna count down from 10, which means we have to account for this tile here as well. If you wanted to just start from five and only deal with that one, that would work just as well. But let's just kind of talk through what we have here. We're gonna start at 10 seconds, then I'll go down to nine, eight, seven, and so on until we get to zero, what we see here. So what I'm gonna do, let me just copy these. Control C, Control V, copy, paste. And then I'll zoom out a little bit. Again, the placement doesn't matter at the moment. We just wanna make sure we're accounting for everything. So we're gonna start with 10 seconds. I'll zoom out a little bit more. And then we're gonna need a nine. So we'll have the zero that's right here. And then after that will be the nine. Same for eight, seven, six, all the way down. So I'll just copy paste and update these and I'll be right back. All right, so there's all the numbers we need. Now let's think through how these are gonna disappear off the screen, similar to what we did in the last example. So we're gonna start with the 10 seconds being visible here. And we want that to disappear and display the nine seconds under it. So this will be the first thing that needs to disappear. We'll come up to animations. And once again, we need an exit animation. For this one, I found swivel was kind of fun, but you can kind of play with it and see what you want. That's what the swivel looks like. And for these, we want these to happen on click. Let's make the duration just half a second, otherwise this will take forever. Same with this one right here, half a second. And this one's gonna go with previous, so the one and the zero, the 10 seconds, those are gonna disappear together. We can just play that to make sure, quick sanity check here. So I'll click, and those two disappear. All right, now we need to do the same thing with the nine. So once again, choosing an exit animation, we're gonna go with swivel. We only want that to take half a second as well. And this one's gonna start after the previous and it'll start one second after the previous. So one second delay. And if you wanna play that just to make sure you're all good, I'll click for those and then the nine should disappear one second later and only take a half a second to disappear. Okay, now that we know that that one works, we'll just select the nine, and once again, use that animation painter, that's what it's for. I'll double click on it, and then I'll go apply it to all of the other numbers. The eight, the seven, I'll get through the rest, and I'll be right back. All right, we've applied the animations to everything. The last thing we need to do is just make sure that things are layered. 
on top of each other correctly so they look right as they disappear. All right, let's talk through this. The last thing we're going to see is the 0, 0 when this whole sequence is over. Right before that we'll see the 0, 1. So this, you might need to bring it to front by right-clicking bring to front. Mine already is, but bring to front and we'll overlay that on the 0. Next we want to have the 2 in front. Bring that up and then I'll just continue working my way up the numbers here. And to save you the tedium of watching me do this, I'll pause the video and be right back. All right, so I've got up to nine seconds. And then the last ones we want to move over, just bring to front. This will go over here. And then this one as well, bring to front. This will make up our 10 seconds right here. Okay, let's play this and see if we got it right. All right, I'll click to start the animation with that 10 disappearing, and then every second you'll see another one disappears with just a half second duration. We've got that nice swivel in there, it's kind of fun. And we should end at zero, 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 zero. Yay! And that's it, two examples of timers that you can create in PowerPoint. For other tips and tricks, check out my PowerPoint playlist, and thanks so much for watching.